Yo, 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 what up, y'all? I'm back again tonight. Um, in here working. It is 12.25. Um, doing a little dual work, working on something for church and finishing up some shirts that I got to finish. Um, but uh, anybody who's been following me for a while, y'all know I've said that I wanted to do like a little web series, web show, blah, 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 little chat session, whatever. Um, not sure how it's going to go. Like right now, y'all just getting these unofficial videos. Like, listen, <laughs> I'm just, I'm just tapping in and giving y'all something. Of course, y'all know Smack, y'all know the name. So this particular shirt I made a long time ago, um, for Smack, it's like a one of one. Um, and it has, you know, servant leadership, mentorship, academic excellence, and community service on my shirt. That is my nonprofit organization that I share with my three best friends, Tori Swain, Quentin Moyer, and Alexander Addison, AJ. Um, so yeah, we started that, uh, three years ago. Um, our crew, when we were growing up, was called Smack. It's essentially the first initial of all of our last names, Swain, Moyet, Addison, and Cruz. And it doubles for the meaning of our four focus areas for our nonprofit, as on my shirt, servant leadership, mentorship, academic excellence, and community service. Um, so yeah, if you want to get a smack shirt, shameless plug, holler at me, let me know. I definitely get you one. Like I said, this one that I have on, it's the only one that I made because I was just trying different things. Um, but anywho, just wanted to come to you guys on tonight, um, just to kind of have a little, you know, a little chat session, just to talk about some things. Um, nothing major is, is, is really, really going on. Um, but I just wanted to share this video that I just watched. Um, I'm sure you guys, like the rest of the world, is following, um, Miss Tabitha Brown, um, I was just scrolling Instagram and one of her, well, her video popped up, you know, stating that she had been nominated for an NAACP award. Congratulations, Miss Tab. Um, I'm sure y'all probably like, why y'all call her Miss Tab? I'm sorry. That's just how I was raised. So let me just go ahead and tell y'all that anybody who is older than me, it's just, for me, it's just a respect issue. Um, I call them Mr. or Mrs., you know, unless they blatantly tell me, stop calling me that. And it sometimes it's hard because that's just kind of how my parents raised me. Um, even if, you know, you are only a year or two older than me. I remember being at church and some of the people that I go to church with that I've known all my life, they're only like maybe four or five years older than me and I call them Mr. and Mrs. And they be like, why do you call me that? And I'm just like, it's a respect thing. Um, it, it's just a respect thing. And it's, it, you know, it's it, it, it's hard for me to break that habit. So it's kind of like, like people say, it's force a habit. Um, I have to, I just have to do it. Um, so, you know, shout out to um, Miss Tab on being nominated and then I just saw that she won so major major win um and she's from North Carolina come on eat in North Carolina stand up but um I was looking at the video that she had posted um you know with her and her husband at you know the watch party at their home um in California on tonight prior to you know the um, after show coming on where they, you know, announced the award where she won. So, of course, you know me, sometimes, like, if I see something on somebody's page, something always tells me, like, let's go back and look at some of their other videos. Like, even though I may have seen them in passing, but let's go look back at one of them. And the video that I just um, scrolled past was one where she was talking about um, how she used to care for her mom um, who had ALS and she was like, you know, this particular time she was staying at her mom's um, home in North Carolina and she, you know, had been taking care of her or what have you, but she woke up in the middle of the night and she went to go check on her mom and her mom was, you know, wide awake and she, um, 
had like a glow to her. You know, she was um, just smiling and, you know, tears were streaming out her face. And she was telling her how she had saw some of the great things that were going to happen for her, you know, later on in her life. And let me tell y'all something. If y'all haven't seen the video, like, I need y'all to go check that video out because that video just, it just blessed my whole entire life. And it literally brought tears to, to my eyes because I could kind of relate, not, you know, to having a, um, a sick parent, but her mom had ALS and for anybody who doesn't know, um, I had an aunt who had ALS and I'm not going to go into great detail about that because I love my aunt and I'm going to get to crying on here and I just, no, 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 no. But she was just saying how, you know, she's from a, she was from a small town, Eden, North Carolina and things like, um, the things that are happening to her now aren't supposed to happen. And listen, that, that video, it just, it blessed my life again. Like I said, and it brought tears to my eyes because it's like, you know, a lot of times we, dream big and we think about different things and you know things aren't we feel that things aren't supposed to happen um to us or whatever or you know a lot of people will get inside your head and say hey um why you drink why you thinking about that oh you want to go do what like nah you can't do that you from this place or you from that place or this has happened to you in your life so a lot of times we discount and we discredit ourselves based off of other people's opinions or whatever so just to share a little bit about me um and normally i i do not do this like i do not but um i think that it'll help somebody so um, I've been working since I was probably like maybe 12, I'll say. Um, so I was playing, you know, I played drums at my church. Anybody who knows me knows that I played drums at my church, um, that I grew up in Greater Joy Baptist Church, um, on the corner of Hardest Street and Cheat Road. <laughs> so I played drums there. I started playing drums at an early age, um, or what have you. So, um, the church, you know, was paying me like a little salary or whatever, was making a little money, making my own money. And then um, as I started getting older, um, I started working odd jobs. My first job outside of playing drums at the church was at McDonald's when I was 14. Um, and I've had a whole bunch of different odd jobs. And um, my first big job, like big corporate job, was in 2007 working at Blue Cross and Blue Shield. So Worked at Blue Cross and Blue Shield for four and a half years. And um, it just, it, something just, something just wasn't right. Like, I just felt like that's, that wasn't what I was supposed to be doing or whatever. So, I ended up leaving Blue Cross um, to pursue something different. Sorry, y'all, I'm pulling this vinyl on the shirt. But, to, um, for the shirt, put, you know, left Blue Cross or whatever to pursue something different. And I didn't just leave um on my own free will like i grew up in the church so you know i know how to pray and you know that or whatever that thing or whatever you know pray ask god to show me signs those types of things so i prayed i remember i prayed in february of 2011 i was like god this just ain't it like this, this ain't it so you're gonna have to send me a sign and one of the things about me is when i pray um I, I need God to dumb it down for me. Like, I need him to give me, you got to literally, like, I want you to come and sit beside me and basically be like, CJ, this is what you need to do. Like, I just, I, I, I talk to God like he's sitting right beside me sometimes. Um, So I was like, you gonna have to give me a clear sign of what you want me to do because this ain't it. And so I remember hearing him say, if you trust me, quit your job. And I was like, oh, no, nah, bro, you tripping. Like, no, nah, I ain't doing that. Uh-uh. <laughs> so, it's a dub. No, I'm not doing it. Um, So, ended up staying at Blue Cross and Blue Shield for, um, that was in February. I ended up staying for seven more months. So, September rolls around. And I was just like, look, this ain't it. I've had so many issues with my um, boss at the time. It was It was just too much. So, I prayed again, like, God, listen, 
something has to give because this is not it. And so when I pray, I said the same thing. I need you to send me a clear sign. Like you got to, cause yo, I'm, I'm at my breaking point at this point. Gave me the same sign. Okay. If you trust me, quit your job. And I was like, okay. All right. I quit my job. So left blue cross in, um, September, September 30th of 2011, I left Blue Cross um, and I went to work at my church full time. You know, long story short, um, I joined the media team at church um, because I've always wanted to do something in um, production. You know, that's always kind of been in the back of my mind. So when I first went to school, I um, wanted to major in CIS, Computer Information Systems. And I was like, mm, no, I don't really want to do that. Let's do something in accounting because, you know, math is my favorite subject. So switch my major when I switch schools um, from Johnson C. Smith to Winston-Salem State. And I was like, my ma new major is accounting. That's it. That's it. So I was like, mm, nah, this ain't it either. Like, I still got the production in the back of my mind. So um, both of my parents will tell you I've always been into music and like BET. I always watched BET growing up. Um, I remember, you know, the old shows that used to come on video. So, um, video vibrations, Caribbean rhythms, um, different things like that on, um, on BET. Um, and I was always into music. Like I was always heavy, heavy into music. So at a young age, I was like, Ooh, I'm going to work for BET one day. Like that's what I'm going to do. So, um, eventually I changed my major to mass communications and, um, it's just like that particular, world it didn't really pop for me like you know i applied for a bunch of different jobs i um saw some jobs on bet i applied for a couple jobs or whatever and it was just like nothing so um i like i said i was working at my church i had a couple odd jobs worked at a hair salon like me at a hair salon <laughs> working at the front desk um i worked at a sweepstakes like me me these are the things that i did so um and eventually I ended up going back to Blue Cross. Um, so I went back to Blue Cross in 2013, in September of 2013. So a little less than two years um, after I left Blue Cross, I went back September 16th of 2013. Started again as a temp, um, kind of worked my way up, you know, was promoted a couple times. Um, and then um, after a while, it was just like, I got... I got that itch again, like, God, I, I'm not happy. Like, this ain't it. This ain't it. So, you got to give me something. And I, I originally got that itch back in 2007. And it was it's so crazy because that was four years um, after I had been back at Bull Cross. And so, it was around the same time, you know, four years again. I don't know what it is about four, but... At, at that four year mark, I was just like, yo, this ain't it. Um, I don't, I don't, I don't really, I'm, I'm not really happy. It's not, um, I, I ultimately don't want to work here long term. So you got to do something. So, um, I ended up getting a job in another department. Um, the person had reached out to my boss at the time and was like, Hey, you know, I've worked with CJ, you know, he's a great individual would love to have him in my department. So, you know, ended up applying for the job. Um, after talking to my boss, ended up getting that job. It was way more money, put me in a whole nother, you know, pay band or whatever. And when I got over there, it wasn't what I thought it was going to be. Like the same person who um, sought me out to get me over there, like she had changed, like my boss had changed. And I just couldn't really rock with her no more. So um, I ended up, you know, moving to another area. Um, when I moved to the other area, um, I came in, you know, with a fresh mindset, trying to implement some changes because they had been doing things, you know, the old fashioned way for the longest period of time and they didn't want to change. So I was just like, this ain't it either. I was like, okay, I'm finally ready to go into leadership. Mo went into leadership, um, and that started off smooth, but then that wasn't it either. Like, again, I was in another area where people didn't really want to, you know, adapt, 
excuse me, adapt to any changes. And I was like, okay, God, listen, like something's got to give again. And so he was like, you know, well, you've been thinking about doing your own thing for a while. Like you got the nonprofit that, you know, popped off in 2018. Um, You've been saying you want to do that full time. So go ahead and do it. And I was just like, hmm, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. So, you know, kept thinking on it, kept thinking on it. And it just seems like things just were not really falling into place like they should have been falling into place. Um, so I had a dream back in um, October about a T-shirt um business and so i had this dream october 20th of 2020 and um in the dream i just kept seeing swag like swag like s-w-a-g the word swag um the word swag and then at one point um the words like just came to me succeeding walking aside god swag and so um, I just kept seeing that repeatedly in different dreams that I was having that night. Um, and so when I woke up that morning, I woke up maybe about 6.55. And um, when I woke up, I was like, I got to write this down. I got to write it down. Swag, succeed in walking aside God. So I wrote it in my phone, didn't do anything with it. And, um, and in... Was it February? I believe it was in February. I went to go see my sister in Tennessee. So there was a lot of stuff that had been going on at work. Um, just a bunch of different issues with an employee and all this crazy stuff or whatever. And I decided that, you know what? I, I It's time for me to step out on faith. Um, so when I came back from Tennessee, I told my boss, I was like, listen, um, I want to have a meeting with you because I need to talk to you about something. And she was like, oh, what do you want to talk to me about? And I was like, nah, it can wait because once I tell you, like, you ain't going to hear it. And she was like, oh, I need you to tell me now. Now I really want to know what it is. And so I told her, I said, well, you know, I'm strongly considering leaving Blue Cross and Blue Shield. Her response was, oh, I don't want to hear that foolishness. Oh, what? You what? No, no, uh-uh. We'll talk about it on Monday. And so um, on... Mar so I ended you know ended up meeting with her on March third of two thousand and twenty one this year. Um I submitted my resignation. I was just like, you know, okay, God, like I I, I trust you and I just, you know, I, I I I don't know. Like I'm just gonna I'm gonna step out there. Like I feel like this is you that is, you know, telling me to um to do this so i kind of just you know stepped out on faith and march 19th well march let me back up march 5th um i launched my clothing company swag clothing um incorporated and so launched it on the 5th of march and immediately it was like an overnight success like people were wanting these shirts left and right um so each friday in march i've dropped a different shirt um on march 18th that was my last day at blue cross so after 14 years at blue cross i decided to walk away from it um and my t-shirt business has been has been doing pretty good um here you know over the past um three weeks or what have you but i know that was long i know i had to give y'all the whole story but um i said all that to say that um you have to um go after your dreams like go after your dreams like i'm i'm getting ready to turn 36 and um i just feel like i haven't scratched the surface yet like i continue to um just stay to myself and you know just kind of listen uh, for God to speak to me, you know, speak to other people. And anybody who knows me knows that I will help anybody. Like, I, I'm just, that's that's just been me all my life. Um, I will talk to anybody. I'll help anybody. I'll give people the shirt off my back. Um, a lot of times I like to give people the benefit of the doubt. My brother always jokes and says that um, I take the Martin Luther King Jr. approach and he'll take the Malcolm X approach. <laughs> so... He says that all the time, um, but you have to you have to go after your dreams. And I don't know who 
who this message is for, but you just have to pray and, you know, seek God's guidance and, you know, go at, just go after your dreams. Like you have to, um, you know, am I scared? Yes. Am I nervous? Yes. Like, do I feel like I want to go back to Blue Cross like tomorrow? Yes. Because that's the norm. That was the norm for me. That was something that was my comfort zone. It was something that I did for, um, like I said, for 14 years, even though I left, like, so technically on paper, I was there 14 years, but I really worked there for 12 years, even still, you know, um, that's a long time. And for me to walk away from something like that, because I wholeheartedly believe that God has something bigger in store for me, like that, that's, that's major. And a lot of times when I share that with people, they like, you quit your job? Oh, you left Blue Cross? What? And I'm like, yeah, like, I'm not concerned. God will provide. Like, he will. And he's showing me that every week, like, through these t-shirts. Like, a simple message on a t-shirt is reaching people. Like, it's blessing people. And there's so many different things that I want to do. Like, um, a couple years ago, I wrote in my phone that I wanted to um, open up a restaurant. That's something that I still want to do. And I want to open it up in honor of my grandparents, like my grandparents who've passed away. And then now my, my aunt, you know, who passed away last year, um, of ALS, like my aunt, let me tell you something. Hattie Goldstein, like, listen, that lady, like she, she was like the ultimate like baker, the ultimate chef. Like it, there's just so much that I could say um about my aunt. And you know, she she that's that's all she knew. Like she always helped people, like she never met a stranger. And so um a lot of times when I'm in here, you know, cooking or you know just deciding to try something new or deciding to bake something like I always say like we that's that's my aunt pig we call it we call it pig that's my aunt pig so when I was in here the other weekend I was baking a cake um I was like all right come on aunt pig like you gotta help me out you gotta help me out now <laughs> she she would always, anytime we had Sunday dinners at my parents' house, she'd be like, oh, nephew, you cook that right there. So it's like, you know, things like that, um, I I really miss. Like, I really miss that um, about her. And, um, yeah, yeah, I really, I really miss that. Like I said, I can't really, you know, talk too much about it because I'll start crying and I ain't trying to do that. Um, but... I, I really miss those. I really miss those things about her. Um, and I just ultimately just want to make everybody proud of me. Like, that's just, that's just what I want to do. And I know a lot of people say, well, bro, you be helping everybody. Like, you're always doing this. Like, let me know what I can do to help. And I'm just the type of person where um, I don't really like to ask people for things. Um, it's not that I'm super, super, you know, prideful or anything like that. But it's just that... If like, like with my shirt business, for instance, all my friends keep saying, bro, like you need me, like my boys will say, bro, you need me to help me help you with something like, let me know, man, I'll come over there and I'll help you. And I guess I look at it from the standpoint of like other people have things going on. So if it's something that I can just get done, like, yeah, it may take me a little longer, you know, to get everything done, but um, I'll go ahead and do it. Like, it's okay. Like, I don't, I don't want to be a burden on anybody, um, else. So it's always often hard for me to ask people, um, for help, but I've, you know, learned a whole lot of different things over this past week. Like, a um, a guy who goes to my church, like I've been helping him, you know, with his line or whatever. And I'll just tell y'all just to be perfectly honest, like, I didn't think me and this dude was going to be friends. Like, we just won't like I, I'm a people watcher so I peg people in my head like when I when I meet them and I just be like oh no like mm -mm. nah it's not gonna happen but it just seems like those same people that um I say that about like God is putting me back in front of them like oh here you gotta go help them or oh hey they go help you so it's just it's it's really really crazy um how things, you know, are kind of aligning for me and how things are, are how things are falling into place. Um, but, you know, like Miss Tab said in, in her video, um, 
continue, you know, continue to dream big. Continue to go after those things that people say that you can't have. Again, I'm about to be 36 in June, and some people may say, oh, you still trying to get the BET at 36? Yes, I am. Because I believe that in my heart, I'm going to get to BET. And I tell my friends all the time, listen, if I get to BET, if I make it, we all going to make it. Because I don't I don't just believe in, you know, getting there and being super, super arrogant. Like, I believe that when I get to BET and they create this position for me and they give me an opportunity, I'm going to bring my friends along and I'm going to give them the same opportunity. Because like my bishop says all the time, like, it ain't no fun if my homies can't have none. So, why I'm going to get to BET in front of all these people that... I don't know. They got different relationships or whatever and just be out there trying to wing it on my own. Nah, bring my people in too. Like we all, come on y'all, we all finna make it. Like we gonna all get out here and we gonna all go out here and grind because that's just the type of person that I am. Like I'm always here to to help others and bring others along. Like I don't care if it's 5,000 people that's out here making t-shirts. I don't care. Like I told, um, Will, the guy, you know, that I'm helping or whatever. I was like, listen, Will, like, bro, I don't care. Like, I got a t-shirt line. If you launch your own t-shirt line, you tell, you let me know what I can do to help you. Like, I don't care. I may get out here and sell five shirts and by me helping you, you get out there and you sell 5,000 t-shirts. I don't care. Like, I did I did my part. I helped you. And a lot of times, you know, us as African Americans or black people, you know, whatever you, you know, want to wanna say, um, we have that crab in the barrel mentality. Like, we feel like, oh, I can't help Johnny over here, you know, launch his business or show him what I know because Johnny know 5,000 people. I only know... 3,000 people. So that means that he going to make 2,000 more, you know, customers or he going to, you know, make more money than I make because he know more people than I know. No, bro. Like it's enough out here for everybody to eat. Again, it's enough out here for everybody to eat. Like, and so if we stop trying to one up each other and stop trying to make it seem like you know I don't want to help this person because they doing the same thing that I'm doing you'll be further along than than what you will be and you never know I say it all the time that same person that you throw away that you don't want to help will be the very person that God may use to bless you so I yes I don't mind helping Johnny who cares if Johnny has a bigger following than me so what? So what? Johnny may be put on a platform where he can, you know, appeal to nations or he can appeal to millions of people. And he may say, you know what, CJ, bro, you help me. So come on, come on with me. Yeah, I got to go to South Africa to do a conference or something. And I want you to come too, because I don't, I don't want people to think I did this by myself. I want them to know that you're, you're the person behind helping me launch my brand. And now I'm, I'm in the same places that they in. So, you know, just be careful how you throw people away or whatever. But again, I said all of that to say, go after your dreams. Like who cares if, if people don't appreciate it, who cares if I don't sell another shirt tomorrow, I'm still going to be good regardless. Like I'm going, I'm going to be, I'm going to be good and I'm going to be okay because like, um, like one of my favorites, Monica said in, in the verses, I know who's and who I am. Like I know who I am and I know whose I am. I believe that's what she said. But so, so I'm good regardless. Like God is going to provide, God is going to make a way. So I, I'm, I'm not concerned. Like I, I'm, I'm really not concerned. Um, so yeah, y'all like the, that's, that's my, that's my rant for tonight. Um, and I know my web series is called, you know, drinks with DSK and y'all don't see no little drink right here. I mean, I got one, but it's it's just right down the side. I just didn't, you know, feel like drinking it or whatever. But um, but yeah, y'all, I might post this video. I might not post this video. So, so yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Like go out to your dreams, bro. Like you're never too old to do anything. Like you're you're never too old. Like I don't care what people say. Like I'm gonna get the BET. Like. I'm going to get there and all it's going to take is for, you know, me to post one thing or for somebody to see something and say, bro, let's give him a chance. Like, like, 
I, I, I feel his energy. I feel his spirit. Let's let's get that dude a chance right there. Like, let's give him a chance. And once they do that, that's that's all it's gonna take. All I need is an opportunity. All I need is a chance. Um, so yeah. That's it, y'all. I think my allergies are starting to cut up, but um, but that's it, y'all. Like, yeah, that, that's that's all that's all I got for y'all tonight. Um, again, if y'all trying to get the shirt, you know, shameless plug, smack, you know, get your shirt or whatever. Um, but yeah, y'all, you know, I ain't got no, no, you know, no major major clothes, um, for y'all or whatever. I'm gonna just say, you know, be good. Like one of my one of my people used to say. Um, be good or be good at it. Um, <laughs> that's it. So, yeah, y'all. Until next time, peace.